Do you ever think of yourself as actually being dead? Lying in a box with a lid on it? No. Nor do I. <laughs> really? It's silly to get depressed by it. I mean, one thinks of it like being alive in a box. One keeps forgetting to take into account the fact that one is dead. Well, it should make a difference, shouldn't it? I mean, you'd never know you were in a box, would you? It'd be just like being asleep in a box. Not that I'd like to sleep in a box, mind. Not without any air. You'd wake up dead for a start. <laughs> and then where would you be? Apart from inside a box. That's the bit I don't like, frankly. That's why I don't talk about it. Because you'd be helpless, wouldn't you? Stuffed in a box like that. I mean, you'd be in there forever. Even taking into account the fact that you're dead. I mean, really, ask yourself. If I was to ask you straight out, I'm going to stuff you in this box now. Would you rather be alive or dead? Naturally, you'd prefer to be alive. Well, because life in a box is better than no life at all, I expect. You'd have a chance, at least. You could lie there thinking, well, at least I'm not dead. <laughs> Any minute, someone's going to bang on the lid and tell me to come out. Oh, you, what's your name? Come out of there. You don't have to flog it to death. I wouldn't think about it if I were you. You'd only get depressed. Eternity is a terrible thought. I mean, where's it going to end? Sir, you believe in God. Believe also in me. Forget Oxford and Cambridge. Why do you all want to go there? Old sir, tried and tested. No, it's because other boys want to go there. It's the hot ticket, standing room only. So I'll thank you if no one mentions Oxford or Cambridge in my lessons. <laughs> <laughs> there is a world elsewhere. Uh, you're hitting us again, sir. Child, I am your teacher. <laughs> You know what fans we are of The History Boys, which is the best play on Broadway right now. And one of the reasons, in fact, a major reason why it's such a good play, is the lead performance by Richard Griffiths, playing Hector, the uh, lovable but slightly troubled schoolmaster in the play. Yeah. You play Hector, yes. schoolmaster, in this play. Um, what, is, what, is his, what is his life like in this play, for people who haven't seen it? Uh, for people who haven't seen it, at one point he talks about uh, the poet Thomas Hardy and he says of Thomas Hardy, a saddish life mm -hmm. but not unappreciated. Mm -hmm. And actually that's Hector's life. Yeah. Yeah. Saddish, not unappreciated but never goes, not going anywhere. Somebody who in a way has wasted his talent mm -hmm. because he's in, the, in, a, in an old run down steel town mm -hmm. in the north of England. Uh, at, a, at, a, at a not very particularly interesting school that doesn't do particularly well mm -hmm. with uh, exams and stuff. The, he's got this golden generation of boys who are all brilliant and it gives focus and meaning to his life. But he's actually sort of lived a life in hiding, I think. Mm -hmm. And he's been a closet human being. That night, I heard Mozart's music for the first time. Some serenade for wind instruments, only vaguely at first, too horrified to attend. But presently the sound insisted, a solemn adagio in E-flat. It started simply now. Just a pulse in the lowest register. Bassoon and basset horn, like a rusty squeeze box. It would have been comic except for the slowness which gave it instead a sort of serenity. And then suddenly, high above it, sounded a single note on an oboe. It hung there, unwavering, piercing me through till breath could hold it no longer. 
and the clarinet withdrew it out of me and softened it and sweetened it to a phrase of such delight it had me trembling. The lights flickered in the room. My eyes clouded. The squeeze box groaned louder and over at the higher instruments wailed and warbled, throwing lines of sound around me. Long lines of pain around and through me. Oh, the pain. Pain as I had never known it. I called up to my sharp old god. What is this? What? But the squeeze box went on and on, and the pain cut deeper into my shaking head, and suddenly I was running down the stairs, through the side door, out into the street, out into the dark night, gasping for life. What? What is this, signore? What is this pain? What is the need in the sound? forever unfulfillable and yet fulfilling him who hears it utterly. Is it your need? Can it be yours? Dimly the music sounded from the salon above. Dimly the stars shone on the empty street. I was suddenly frightened. It seemed to me that I had heard a voice of God, and that it issued from a creature whose voice I had also heard. And it was the voice of an obscene child. 